Nicholas Rushworth is here. He's been looking at all the top headlines in the international press. Good morning. Hi to you, Catherine. And uh, you're going to be starting with The Guardian in the United Kingdom. Well, The Guardian has an exclusive, Catherine, and it's about the Sochi Winter Games. Uh, we're hearing a lot about that because of uh, Putin and lighting that flame um, at the Black Sea Resort. Now, there you can see The Guardian article, and it's saying that, well, Russia is heading for a gold medal in surveillance techniques. The headline there, Russia to monitor all communications in Sochi. Now, what is this about? Uh, well, the, the technology in place now um, will keep track of everybody, um, visitors and athletes, um, that whole decision, that move to cover the games uh, in full spying-wise is being called um, PRISM on steroids. PRISM, <laughs> of course, being the NSA surveillance uh, system that we know uh, associates with Washington. But here, Moscow is really um, cracking down on whoever goes to Sochi um, during the games. Oh, very cloak and dagger stuff. How did The Guardian get its hands on these uh, documents then? Well, um, it was our correspondent, Sean Walker, who wrote that piece um, He for The Guardian. He uh, got the material from two investigative journalists in Russia itself. Now, those two Russian journalists waded through masses of sources to learn that the Russian intelligence agency, the FSB, which is uh, the successor to the KGB, which is, of course, where P Putin was, Vladimir Putin, um, before he became a part of Russian politics. Now, the FSB have basically made major changes to telephone and wireless Wi-Fi wi networks in Sochi to um, implement a system called SORM, SORM, that's Russia's system for intercepting phone calls and internet communications. So the technology has been put in place um, also in The Guardian's coverage, because this is an exclusive for them. Uh, we have a picture of anti-Putin protesters showing um, the, their, their anger at um, anti-gay legislation, what's seen by some as anti-gay legislation in Russia. The caption for that photo, Catherine, is well, the Kremlin surveillance network in Sochi will focus on dissent as well as terror threats. So we'll expect more, won't we, about the whole question of a boycott for Sochi and, and the, all the issues around it, not just that one. Absolutely. Still several months uh, left to go before those games do kick off uh, in 2014. Uh, staying with all things intelligence, um, Nicholas, you've been looking at the US papers as well about these raids that we've seen over the weekend uh, by special forces in Africa. Well, I saw this piece in one of the big papers in the United States called USA Today, and it's headlining, there you can see it, that those commando raids were risky but yielded valuable intelligence. That word again, as you said, Catherine. Now, it says the paper uh, is arguing that um, the use of commandos rather than drones, because we're used to um, Washington really going al along with its drone strategy, um, aren't we? That's what we're used to. But these commandos were in place on Saturday in Somalia and in Libya. And that yields advantages for security um, and analysis as far as they're concerned. They're saying that, well, yes, drones actually have some effect, but what you need sometimes is actually commanders on the ground to target individuals, get phone, mobile phones, get notebooks, get computers, and to build up um, um, and, uh, more information. And the fact that Somalia and Libya have weak central governments, in Somalia's case incredibly weak, it's a failed state, um, what, we, what we're seeing is an opportunity, a window of opportunity for the Americans to go in with commandos and kind of just get away with a quick raid, really. So um, of that whole question of um, drones, which um, the US say today is looking at is, 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 as far as that paper is concerned, is not now with this a major shift in policy. The drone policy remains in place as far as the USA Today paper is concerned. OK, well, you mentioned that uh, weak governments in uh, certain African countries. Uh, a couple of newspapers arguing today that uh, the government of Bashar al-Assad, or he personally, is not as weak as we might think. He looks pretty likely to remain in power. What, what's their argument there? Well, this is um, a piece in the Gulf News, which is arguing that Assad could remain in power because of the state of flux in the country and shifting alliances. So what it calls a diplomatical musical chairs. Um, also, there's no no credible and united opposition. Um, that article there saying, with the situation now, even one month uh, ago, we would never have thought this, but now the situation is that Assad could stay 
gain power as a kind of compromise. The last line of that article is, well, he who laughs last laughs loudest. Um, so a bit worrying. I want to turn or two to the Jordanian paper, Adustur. Um, it's saying that Iran, which is now opening up to talks over the nuclear issue, uh, will want to negotiate its settlement on Syria. Um, Russia will want Assad to stay. And Israel will want a weak Assad. So that's uh, uh, my look at the international papers, um, Catherine. Thank you very much for that. Nicholas Rushworth uh, with the Press Review on France 24. We're taking a very short break here on Live from Paris, but stay with us because coming up we're going to be meeting one of the journalists from our sister radio station RFI who's uncovered secret documents detailing how Islamist militants planned to spread their radical Islam in North Africa. Do stay with us for that. <laughs> 